My name is Scott Thorpe and I'm with the law firm of Kunzler IP Law and today I'll be discussing the topic of provisional patents. A provisional patent is not what most people think of as a regular patent. You can't sue anyone to enforce it, you can't license it, you can't sell it. All it really gives you is a placeholder that will allow you later on to go back and file a regular non-provisional utility patent. But that placeholder is extremely important because it gives you what we call a priority date. And this priority date you can use in filing all kinds of other applications, including international applications. It basically sets the date of your invention. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing because not only does it give you that important priority date, but it's also cheap. It only costs $110 to file a provisional patent application. You can do it at USPTO.gov. And you can probably do it yourself. Anyone that can come up with an invention is smart enough to file a provisional patent application. Now, it does give you the right to convert to a regular patent within one year. If you don't convert within a year, it basically just goes away as, as though you, you never filed it. Now, everything you file with the United States Patent Office, the Patent Trademark Office, is kept secret. So after you file this application, no one knows about it. No one ever looks at it. It's just there. It only comes into play if later on you file a regular uh, non-provisional patent application within a year. Now let's look at the steps that are needed to go ahead and file a provisional patent application. A provisional patent application. We start with the drawing. If we have our our uh, Hasselhoff Sneaker Company here, then what you do is you basically take uh, uh, your invention and you draw it. And you don't have to have uh, great art. Hand-drawn drawings are fine. But you draw your invention and then you label all the important parts with numbers. So I can say this is part 10, the sole here is part 12, this bulge is part 13, but you go through every single element of your invention and you draw all the parts. Now what if, what if it isn't a physical object? What if it's a process such as a chemical manufacturing process, uh, software, or something like that? In that case you simply draw a flowchart and label each of the parts with a written description and with numbers. Numbers are very important when you're doing patent applications. That's good enough. Your drawings can be hand done, but it's very important that you cover every single aspect of your invention in your drawings. As soon as you have these drawings done, then you start to describe them in writing. And when you do that, it's important to reference these numbers. So you'll say, for example, uh, the stripe 10. But as you, you go through and, and describe your invention in detail. Now the biggest rookie mistake that people always make in describing their invention is that they don't describe it in enough detail. They, they say, okay, this is enough that I understand it. You want to go well beyond that. You want to write and write and write about your invention. And here's why. Think about a patent application as a cross-Sahara road race. Okay? You get in your car and you start off. Now everything that you have in the car when you start is what you're going to be able to use out in the middle of the Sahara. Okay? If you don't bring it, you can't use it later on. That's a bad thing because uh, three months later, or th not three months, but three years later you might still be examining your patent and say, oh, you know, if we only would have said this, we could throw that in right now. It would be extremely useful. If you didn't start with, it with, with your provisional patent application, then it's harder to include it later. Okay? So it's write all you can about it because these are going to be the spare parts, the tools that will, you'll use to fix your patent application later. So write everything you can about it, 
and uh, draw everything you can about it and describe it all in great detail. After you've done that, you simply send it in with your money in a simple form and that's it. Now, later on as you develop your patent application more, you can add additional things to your, to your non-provisional utility patent application when you file it, claiming the priority date to this provisional. The catch is that whatever you add after the provisional doesn't share this original priority date. So that's important and that is why when you're writing your provisional patent application it's so important to write about everything you can think of and after you've done that go back and write some more. With that is a provisional patent application.